Hello there, this is Only One Kenobi here, Only One. I, w I wasn't going to do a video tonight, I really wasn't, but I just thought I would because we've had the Acolyte tonight and I want to give you my thoughts and in turn I look forward to hearing about what you thought about it, which is the nice thing about having a channel with almost 10,000 subscribers now and you always let me know how you feel about things. But I was, well I wasn't gearing up for the worst man, I, I really wasn't because I have to say, I was, I liked the trailers that I saw and I also liked the preview I saw after the Phantom Menace in the cinema, we saw the whole scene with Trinity in it, you see. Trinity Carrie Ann Moss. Um, and I like that as well. And I know there's been a lot of negativity online, but I was kind of going in fairly optimistic, unless it was garbage and we only saw the best in the trailers. And that sometimes happens. We've had that before with other series and films. The trailers look great. The content actually turns out to be average, mediocre, badly executed. But I actually enjoyed this, and I want to know how you felt about it. We've only had two episodes. I'm not saying it was absolutely groundbreaking or anything like that. It was decent content. I liked it. But God, I mean, they've spent so much money on it, apparently, that you'd hope it would be. And it makes you wonder about the fact that it's on Disney Plus, and I don't know the thing with subscribers and currency that they can make from it, but one would hope that... Uh, well, given the amount of bad reviews and bad press it gets, it seems to get that people probably wouldn't even subscribe to Disney Plus just to watch it. But you don't know. You never know. You never know. But the reason I have got these figures here is this is one figure to represent every series we've had on Disney Plus thus far. Not including Clone Wars, Bad Batch, anything like that. I'm talking about live action stuff here. And of course, with, you know, not including either movies, Rogue One, Solo and the sequel, Travesty. I don't want to talk about that either. But, um, yeah, the series, for me, you see, this is the thing. They have been up and down and up and down. There's been good, there's been dire. Um, and this is what we've had. We've had The Mandalorian, we've had The Book of Boba Fett, Kenobi, Andor, Astronomical. I loved it, absolutely loved Andor. And then, of course, Ahsoka. And that's the journey we've had now. We're on The Acolyte. And I thought it was decent. And I'm going to give you some more details on what I liked momentarily. The, Ma the Mandalorian season one, everybody loved it. You know, well, I can't talk for everybody. I'm sure there were people out there who didn't like it. But for the most part, season one and two really did land. And season two, I think they should have stopped there, man. It was just the best ending with Luke and everything like that. Let's not talk about season three, because that really did lose the plot, man. I really didn't think that worked at all. The Book of Boba Fett, you see, we were all so excited for it. Um, and there were moments of great potential and scenes like the reason I put my Cad Bane figure here is because well it's nice to have a look at a really good figure isn't it but there were just some moments in it and I I, I watched it all um, last week actually the Book of Boba Fett I was off work and I just fancied watching it and I did and I loved bits with him you know Boba Fett is a cold-blooded killer who worked for the Empire just loved things like that but then there were just awful awful things in the book of Boba Fett like why did you put that in there it didn't make any bloody sense who who wrote it who did the writing for it? it was awful it wasn't awful it was good but it was also bad you know what I mean anyway moving on then we had Kenobi which again we were all excited for but what is it about the, the shows that have had legacy characters they've been the worst maybe it's because we're all on eggshells I well I certainly have been you're nervous, you think, what the Bruh. hell are they going to do next? Like, for example, messing around with Baru and, uh, oh, look at these two. These were in the book of Boba Fett as well, Cammy and Fixer. Yeah, Baru and Owen, man. I mean, messing around with them and having Luke in it. Oh, no. And then Reva should have died as well, man. She should have, he should have killed Reva. Anyway, this is a wonderful figure from the uh, Kenobi series. And I did like that. That's why I've probably chosen this figure there's not that many figures we've got in three and three quarter inch for Kenobi but um but that was that Kenobi was <sighs> dangerous territory to be messing around with legacy characters like that then I think all our expectations well mine were anyway so low I didn't know what to expect from Mandor but that I watched about a month ago again I watched it again a month ago I should say but I love Andor so much pure injection of Star Wars as in original trilogy Star Wars, as in New Hope. You, know, you really do see what the working man's life was like under the Empire, the, the tyranny. 
and the difficulty to communicate for these factions of uh, fledgling rebellion, man. It was just brilliant. On edge. Fantastic. And then Ahsoka, you see, well, that had some... Like the Book of Boba Fett, it had some moments of great potential, had some moments of genius, like when you saw the Clone Wars sequences in live action. And it was all a bit like, I don't know, massively anticlimactic. <sighs> you know what I mean? Like, the fact in real life we lost Ray Stevenson and the fact that, you know, he was the best thing in it and we know he can't ever return to the show is just absolutely does your head in, doesn't it, really? So enough about that, that's where we're up to. And the Acolyte, I thought, was a solid start, man. And these are a few things I liked about it. Uh, Trinity, I thought she was great. There will be some spoilers here, ladies and gentlemen, because I'll tell you something that actually I'd already heard before I watched tonight. I'd already heard somebody spoilt for me the fact that, you know, Carrie Ann Moss, she, she dies in episode one. You see her in the trailer, you see her in the... Yeah, in the trailer, and also that preview I saw in the cinema. She's dead now, I'm afraid, which is a shame because I thought she was awesome in it. Let me just mount this camera now because I'm sick of holding it. Um, I liked things like the... Uh, what was I going to put there? Yeah, the story, man, about these two twins, Osha and May. I thought it was really interesting. And that's all I'm going to say. I just thought the concept of two twins, which I know has been done before, I'm pretty sure that's an old Republic story, that, isn't there? I'm sure they've got something to do with two twins and... I don't know how that one ends out, I'm afraid. I've only seen some trailers for the Old Republic series, but it's interesting, really good. And, um, you know, Lee Jung... Is it Lee Jung Jae or Lee Jung Jae? The guy from Squid Games. I've not seen Squid Games, but I am aware of it. His character was really good, and I liked the conduct of the Jedi. You know, George Lucas always said, if you watch those interviews of him talking about, you know, during the prequel trilogy talked about the heyday of the Jedi and stuff, but I would never class the prequels as the heyday, really. It's the end. And they're in a political mess. They really have lost their way. And, you know, the more you analyse the prequels, you realise how lost they are in their own rules. And, you know, they're basically in the midst of an orchestrated civil war, and it's pathetic. You know, when you talk about them being, like, sheriffs... I think George has definitely said they're, like, the sheriffs of the... Um, Peace, let's call them peacekeepers, but they are wandering around and they enforce the law in their own way, um, get what they want, and they go on their missions. You only really saw these two in Attack of the Clones doing that. I know you see a lot in the Clone Wars, it flushes out a lot more, but even there, they're in the midst of a war. They're puppets, they're military generals and stuff like that. That's not really what the Jedi are supposed to be doing. And I haven't read The High Republic, I know nothing about any of that. And I'm, you know, I'm one of these people who would also love to see the Old Republic era go right back thousands of years, all in good time. I'm sure they will do that. But High Republic got a lot of criticism. and I've not read any, read any of those books, but this thing of 100 years ago and seeing what the Jedi were doing was really nice. I like to see the you know, Jedi Temple, the training, subtle conversations like they say, we need to go here to find so-and-so. And then the master's like, go and do it, but be discreet, blah de blah go and do it. So it's like... A big mystery, isn't it? Like a, a murder mystery, solving mysteries, going off on little missions to do what they need to do. That's all got me on the hook, man. Um, little things like the lightsabers as well. The lightsabers look good and chunky. Sometimes you get sick of lightsabers. You watch the Clone Wars and everyone's flinging them around and it's too much lightsaber. With this, you know, she pulled, you know, Trinity pulls it out right at the end of that little fight. <laughs> Holds it, uses it when she needs to, and it just looks nice. And chunky on screen. I don't know what it is. Do you know what I mean by that? The lightsaber look nice and chunky and solid and good. And the sound effects in the show are brilliant, very subtle again. Um, I like the way they have done that, even with all these other series. They've very sensibly dipped into the archive nicely. And like, for example, there's a couple of escape pods that shoot off the prison ship in the first episode. And they definitely, 100%. <laughs> use the R2 and 3PO sound effect from A New Hope when they leave that Star Destroyer. Things like that are, you know, well realised and good. Uh, the music as well. If somebody told me that this was orchestrated and written by John Williams, I would have bought it, man. I would have believed them because it's so well done, the music in this. And it's nice incidental music as well. Things like optical wipes and dissolves, very like the original trilogy as well. Uh, so that's good. It's just nice to see them yeah so it's like if they're playing if you're using your cards like in a poker game 
uh, playing their cards sensibly, I'd say, with certain things like music and sound effects. It was good. Really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing more. I like the way the Jedi looked as well. They had that kind of like white robe when they were in the uh, temple. And also you saw them out and about wearing the white ones. And then suddenly they were wearing the brown ones. I don't quite know what the uniform protocol is. I don't know if you could, if you any, any of you managed to um, decode that. But um, it was interesting. Plus, the biggest thing that everyone talks about is this whole issue. What was he called now? Kiadi Mundi, when he said the Sith have been extinct for almost a millennia. Now that's the one thing that everybody is worried about, that law being broken. Well, all I'll say is it could just be that this guy, the guy you saw at the end of episode one, the Kylo Ren looking dude, he could be just operating behind the scenes and nobody sees him. Alas, we do know that the Jedi see him because in one of the trailers they all say, what are you? What are you? They see him and he draws his saber on them. But... Um, does every red lightsaber user, dark force user, have to be a Sith? I used to think that until more contents come out even before the Disney era. You realise the likes of Asajj Ventress. I mean, she's not a Sith, is she? She's an assassin. She's a dark force user. So these characters, is that how they're going to get around it? I mean, how did they know that Darth Maul wasn't just an assassin? He had a red lightsaber and immediately Qui-Gon and everybody says, there's no doubt he was a Sith Lord. Well, they, well they, say, no, they say that at the end. They say there's no doubt he was a Sith Lord. But Qui-Gon initially, when they first get to Coruscant, says, I, my guess is that he was a Sith Lord. And he goes, impossible. The Sith have been extinct for almost a millennia. You know, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know how they're going to get around it, man. But I don't really care. It's not massively keeping me up at night, really. But I hope they uh, work it out and are respectful to the original lore that was spoken in the, in the original trilogy, only because that's George's playing field. Whoever plays Osh is pretty good, man. I thought the acting was great, really good. Looking forward to more. I'm going to shut up there because I'm waffling on here, I know. But uh, I would love to know your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even know if I want to watch anyone's reviews because I know people have been ultra hostile so far and I don't particularly... I would be interested to know what they say about it, though. But because so, some people have been so hostile, they've made their bed, they're going to have to sleep in it now, otherwise they'll completely lose face on their channels. They have absolutely laid into this. Um, badly uh, and I didn't think it was all that bad really that was just my opinion what were yours let me know in the comments below ladies and gentlemen this has been only one Kenobi only one out <laughs>